Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sal Patera channel and I have a really big treat for you today. We are with Captain Claudio Capristi of the Carnival Horizon and we're going to come back and have a discussion, talk about his life here on board when we come back right after this. Hey guys, welcome back. And before we begin, as always, please make sure you click that subscribe button, click the little bell notification, that way you're notified every we put up one of these great videos like today on board the Carnival Horizon. And again, we are with one of the best captains in the fleet, Captain Claudio Caprici. Did I say that correctly? Capristi. Capristi, Capristi yes. excuse me, of the Carnival Horizon. Now, we've been on board for about four days now and are having the time of our life. And it all starts with this gentleman right here who's in charge of this beautiful vessel. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you know, your uh, introductions. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for taking the time. I know you're extremely busy on board um, doing the day-to-day -day life of the ship just for taking that time out of your schedule and meeting with us to, uh, to do this great interview. Well, as you see, you know, today, unfortunately, we have this uh, change of itinerary, and, uh, but we are uh, safe and sound. We are moving uh, towards Miami and we are on a, on a nice day, on a nice track. So I can get uh, you know a few, few moments to Absolutely. stay with you and uh, spend time and have a chat. And what the captain is talking about is um, during our voyage we had a small propulsion issue, so we're on our way back to Miami. Are we planning on still getting to Miami on time? We're going to be exactly on time on Mi in Miami as per scheduled, so everybody can relax and enjoy the activities on board. We have a lot to offer, so we are on a, we are here to provide you the necessary tool to build up. Uh, good memories for the time to come. Absolutely, and I think everybody's having a fantastic time on board. This is what seems like. Everybody's happy, everybody's enjoying. So we are not, uh, we are not, uh, not fulfilling whatever we promised to do. So let's talk about you. You're obviously Italian. I think most of the officers I know that are captains on board Carnival are from Italy. Yes, the, the majority of the captains on, Ita on, uh, on the Carnival ships are Italian or uh, um, Croatian. I've uh, been at sea for the last uh, 42 years. And uh, do you mind if I... No, please. Oh, yeah, thank you. I've been at sea for the last 42 years. Been a captain as for uh, 24 now. And uh, I love this job, obviously, otherwise I would not be here. And uh, it's taken me away from home, but on the, on the other side of the coin, they give me the leisure to meet people like yourself, learn languages, see places, and uh, enjoy my life in the best way possible because I'm here outside on a beautiful vessel in the middle of, of the ocean, and uh, it's, uh, it's what was my vocation. Sure. Do you have a family back home? Yes, I have a family. I have two beautiful daughters. One is uh, 30, the other one is uh, 10. <laughs> so it's a big gap in between, but is a life. Do they come on board and spend time with you on board? Yes, they do. They do often. Uh, not now with the restrictions that we have due to, due to the pandemic, but uh, other than that, yes, they are with me. They spend in time. And we were talking nice. just before you arrived um, because most of the captains we know on board Carnival are from Italy, but some of the other lines. Um, aren't, like Captain Kate, who has a very successful uh, right. video log. Why is it that Carnival chooses Italian captains? Well, I think that is a uh, lot to do with the beginning of this company. The beginning of this company, the, the owners at the time decide to employ Italian captains, and uh, from there it's becoming a tradition. Now, all throughout the years with the opening of the global employment way, also Carnival did open up, so this is why we have the Croatian, we have officers from Poland, France, uh, Germany, all over the place. And uh, we are trying to become more international while we moving on. Now, uh, to be a captain, you need uh, quite a vast experience because uh, people are priceless, ships are the cause that they are, and the responsibility is great. Is great. It, it, it's very big, so you need years of experience, and uh, now to feel to fulfill our ranks, the people need to grow up in the ranks underneath. So eventually, in the next few years, you're going to see less 
Italian capital and more of a cosmopolitan. Is that a good thing? Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, the variety is always a good thing. If we can have a lots of ideas, we can start into thinking outside the box, be also out of the tradition, and uh, make more profitable. The person that you that you mentioned, Captain Kate, great person. She have uh, you know she have uh, this uh, good uh, good excellent PR personality. You know so this is what we need. We need people that are uh, more uh, open. Does it make the communication world. barrier with you and your staff a little harder with people that are speaking different languages? Well, I think that the only thing that is going to make it harder is the way you are. And my English, sometimes I sound like Dracula, you know, with the voice. My family's from Italy. Other than that, that <laughs> no, you know what I mean, you know, it is the accent that it can be a little bit uh, mischievous, but uh, other than that, no, if you are, if you are uh, uh, a person that can stay with other person, you don't have any difficulty. You find a way to get your point across, to really do what you need to do. Where in Italy are you from? I'm from a place near Florence in Tuscany, the beautiful Tuscany, and uh, the, the name of the town is Viareggio, which is just uh, about 30 minutes from Florence on a coastline, on a seashore of the coast. So growing up, you were obviously Growing near up, I was uh, at sea. My family never been at sea, funny enough. My father was a shipbuilder, and, uh, but I had uh, this... Um, what you say, this feeling that my life was, uh, since when I was a kid, was to go in abroad and to see, to see the world. And partially that happened because uh, when I was a little, I read uh, this book from uh, Emilio Salgari, I don't know if you remember, uh, and the name is uh, 20,000 Leagues sure. Under the Water, right? So they was talking about pirates, submarine, and so on. So I got infatuated with this uh, kind of life, if you will, on the book, and uh, I wanted to see the, 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 the the world and uh, visiting the place that uh, was described on the book. So I don't think I've ever read the book, but I th I'm pretty sure Jacques Cousteau did a movie on it that I watched when I was much younger. There is, a, there is a few movies, yes, yes. So it was the adventure, the adventure to be outside, uh, what I'd say. And then I fall in love. I fall in love for the reasons that I said to you, that uh, you are uh, on, a, on a vessel, you're meeting people, you have the the, the possibility to, to grow up uh, uh, intellectually because you're learning languages, to, you meet somebody else, you interact, you know new words. So everything is positive. Is the adventure what you thought it was going to be? Sometimes, yes, sometimes it's a uh, lot of routine. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I think but, <laughs> that's going to be the hardest part of the job, no? Yes, the routine is the hardest part of the job. I, I was telling my, my beautiful wife last night um, why I was sitting in bed last night in our room and for those of you who haven't been on a cruise before, what I'm about to say is not typical of how you feel on a cruise ship. I want to put that right up front. But I was watching a video of a YouTube friend of mine who they buried alive uh, in a coffin for 50 hours. Wow. wow. And by the time I got to the end, it was about a 30 minute video. I'm sitting in my cabin and I'm thinking, okay, and now I'm getting claustrophobic here. And I can't imagine – I've always wanted to live on board. Being a cruise director was one of my dreams growing up, and I, I never right. pursued it. But I can imagine being on the bridge every day in the same routine when things are going normally. As normal is probably the best thing for you. Yes. Um, it yes. probably gets monotonous sometimes as well. Yeah, you know, sometimes it does. But then, on, again, on the other side, when you're looking outside and you see the beautiful scenery, even if it's the same way every day, it's, it's, it's different. Because there is not, it's not like in an office that the wall, the, the wall is always the wall. Is always, uh, you know, changing sure. all the time. So you can see islands, natures, panorama of uh, any kinds. Have you been on? Have you been a captain of smaller? I mean, this place is huge. Have you been oh, on I start. Uh, well? I start with the uh, Mardi Gras. The, you know, the original Mardi Gras, and uh, I moved to this vessel. So I went. I, I was on a different class. So you were on the original Mardi Gras. I was on the original Mardi Gras as an officer. Yes. Yes, I was on the original Mardi Gras, oh, yes. and it was a long time ago. And uh, I started as an officer, second officer. And then I moved my career. I went from there to the Tropical, which was the next, uh, say, bigger ship at the time. And uh, all the different class celebration uh, 
Jubilee, Conquest class, and then eventually I end up Which here. do you prefer, big or little? Well, honestly, this one is beautiful. Me personally, I love the Spirit class, which is the Pride, the Legend, and uh, Miracle, which is a little bit smaller than this one. But uh, I guess I like them better because I uh, participate to the constructions, to the building of the shipping in Finland, in the shipyard.